Hi, I'm Mark Brown and this is my journey deeper into God's Word. And today is a little bit different. This is a gift, especially for people who are struggling. For today, and actually for a number of days, I've really felt the burden of people known to me, those in my network, who are really, really struggling. So I wanted to offer this, this journey deeper, this reflection for you. If you are struggling, this is for you. Or if you know someone who's struggling, then please pass this video on to them. Encourage them to watch this. The passage I want to start with is Matthew 11, 28. And Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And it feels like that. When you're struggling, when you're weary, when you're tired, it literally feels like you are carrying a heavy burden. You've got a massive sack, a massive bag on your shoulders as you trudge up a hill that is life. You just feel like stopping. You feel like stopping right there and going no further sometimes. You feel like sleeping. Perhaps you feel an incredible demotivation, that it's hard to do anything. So how, how do you get this rest? When it says, when it says in verse 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Well, how do you get this rest? Of course, the rest is not just a, you know, a five-minute break and then you're back into it. But rest talks of being rejuvenated, of the load no longer being heavy or burdensome, of the smile returning to your life, of the joy returning. Well, it reads in verse 29, the next passage, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Take my yoke upon you. Well, what that means is the teachers at the time would choose their students. The rabbi, the teacher, and of course Jesus is the greatest teacher of all, the greatest rabbi. And the way you knew which uh, rabbi you were attached to as a student, the way you knew who your rabbi was, is you literally wore a collar around your neck, and it sat around your neck. And so anyone in the street could tell who your teacher was, because it had the name of the rabbi, of the teacher, and that was called a yoke. So in this passage, when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, what he's saying is, become my student. So how do we find the rest when we are struggling? We submissively become a student of Jesus. And not only in our head, remember what I told you, that the students of the day uh, were identified with a particular teacher because they wore a special collar called a yoke that had the name of the rabbi, of the teacher. They were publicly identified. Now, I'm not suggesting we start a, a new craze where we wear big, thick collars with Jesus Christ. But what it does mean is that we are not ashamed to tell people that I'm a student. I'm a student, and I'm a student of Jesus, and I will always be a student of Jesus. I am ready to learn. Now, this is no ordinary teacher. This is no ordinary teacher. You know, I go to the gym a bit, <laughs> and occasionally there'll be a personal trainer in there. I've never used one. Uh, but I'm fascinated, and I think that there's probably a lot of benefits in it. But I've seen one that was particularly capable. 
and they were capable because they were a teacher and their student uh, was learning massively off them, their techniques of lifting. But that's not what I want to focus on. What stood out for me was how motivational they were. That when the student was struggling, really struggling with a particular weight, that's where, in my mind, the personal trainer came to their fall. That's where the best personal trainers stand out. Not that, he, not that they were yelling at the student, that uh, personal trainer, that teacher, but they were just enthusing them. Come on, you can do this. One more rep. Come on. <laughs> and sure enough, the student rose to the challenge. And then as soon as the exercise was done, that wonderful personal trainer slapped them on the back and said, you are doing an incredible job. Or what about lectures I've had or teachers I've had? I think of one in particular that you wanted to be in their presence. They had a charisma, I guess. They taught you in a way that made you feel warm about yourself, made you feel valued. And then in the inverse, of course, is the teacher where you feel bored, judged, a little embarrassed even. And quite frankly, which one do you learn more of as a student? Well, for me, I always learn more of the teacher who pays an interest in me, of the teacher who wants to see me succeed. Well, that is Jesus. Jesus wants to see you free. Jesus wants to see you completely released from any struggle, any pain. Jesus wants you to become more of what God has created you to be. Not burdened, not struggling, not squashed down, not confused, not questioning, but full of life motivated, full of energy, full of excitement. Well, I'm not talking about without physical ailment, of not being sick. I think that's not right. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is about your attitude. It's about the way you approach life. So if you are struggling, Jesus is saying clearly through this passage in Matthew, Become my student. And I'm no ordinary teacher. I will motivate you. I will make you feel valued beyond what you even consider you are capable of. In a relationship with me, says Jesus, through his word, you will become more of what I have created you to be. You will be doing things that you didn't think were possible getting involved in activities and a life that is full of energy and vibrancy. So how do you receive that care? This is my gift to you. In this passage, how we receive that care if you are struggling is you submit yourself to become a student of Jesus Christ and you make that public. I am a student of of Jesus Christ. I want to learn. I want to soak up. I want to get as much as I can, as much as possible of the teachings and life of Jesus Christ. And how do you do that? Well, the first and foremost is you read, you can't see that, not a very good picture, but you read the Bible. That is the Bible, <laughs> you version uvision.com. You read the Bible. That's the teachings. You want to learn the teachings of Jesus? That's where you go. That's the first place. But not just. There are wonderful Christian books out there on the person and character of Jesus. Google it. But make a commitment to become a student of Jesus Christ. I am a student of Jesus Christ. And I cannot wait to see what Christ is going to show me. And let me finish by saying, if you leave in the comments below, whether on YouTube or my blog or, or on Facebook, if you leave a request for prayer, I will pray for you. I would love to pray for you. God bless.
and please pray for me as I have much to learn. Together we learn on the journey.